Hello, viewers. This is Prostodontics on Fridays, to give, which uh, talks about uh, how to approach uh, implants and also solve some of the issues. I am Jo Ino, uh, MC of this lecture series. Today, we are going to have part two of how to control loading time for the uh, patient with bad bone quality. Again, we have Dr. Song Mugyong uh, with us. Uh, today, we will talk about part two of the how to determine loading time with uh, patient with bad bone quality. So could you give a general summary of your uh, lecture today? So what to consider and uh, for a uh, patient with uh, bad bone quality and and how to control of the loading time will be what I'm going to talk about today. So if you are joining us live, you can use a uh, chat box uh, to post your questions. We'll answer them in our Q&A session. We look for your interest and participation. And we will start with the part two of Dr. Song Mugyong's lecture. Hello, this is Song Mugyong of the Mokdong Bubu Dental uh, Clinic. Thank you for that nice introduction. So as introduced, I'm going to talk about how to determine loading time and what to uh, consider for the restorations. In loading, there are a few diagnostic tools we can use. I think the most important thing will be prime and stability. If the bone quality is low, there is no div uh, baseline, so using device would be helpful. In the beginning, there was a um, perio test, but now uh, there is Korean-made uh, products available. So this one I had in the beginning used for a few months, very similar to perio test. Uh, so I used both, but I have uh, my confidence uh, in the Osteomenter, so I've been using this since 2005. Since I started use Osteomenter, there was no uh, guideline. Um, there was a you know, reference that 65 ISQ value is good. My empirical ex uh, experience told me that that was very low. So I just used my clinical experience-based judgment. And for D1, there's no much difference, but for D2 and D3, within two or three months, uh, you can go beyond 80. So this one's I'm not too concerned, but D4 is, as you know, can be concerning. So it starts very low, and sometimes you cannot even measure IFSQ value. So with submergence, after a while, you start measuring. And for me, IFSQ value, I take every month. And if you look at the values measured, it goes up, and at certain point, the IFSQ value becomes the same as the previous month. So I believe by this time, uh, OCO integration has stabilized. So at this juncture, uh, I think uh, connecting abutment is okay, so I do that. In the beginning, uh, if I skew value is low, then I, you know, connect it with the 30 Newton, but as it uh, showed flat, um, you know, so I used to have it with the 20 Newtons, but you know, if it's flat, um, uh, connecting abutment with 30 Newtons seems to be okay. So whether to do provisional or definite restoration, if the ice cube value is low, like below 75, I regard this as a low value. If it's more than 80, I think it's high value. So if the ice cube value is low, I use provisional for a long time. Uh, if it's high, then I go with the final restoration. But whether it's single or multiple, numbers change. If it's multiple, then you become more generous. If it's single, um, it's uh, better to apply uh, more strict so when you first use Osteomentor, as I said, there was no guideline. So this uh, product, how would it 
be helpful in the clinical setting, I wanted to know. So after using few years, I did a simple test like this. Defect is rather big. Uh, so doing GBR and then I put here hard tissue, then uh, there should be difference in SQ value. So I created that type of situation and placed implant by, uh, you know, three meters, two meters, and one, one millimeters. And if you measure the value, meaningfully, there is a change of the ISQ value. So yeah, I did grafting here uh, and um, changed, then, you know, numbers will also change. So when I should put in prosthodontics, I would know. So 74, you know, implants has been placed, but 74 is rather low. This is because we did it with the three, three bone. First, we started the test with D2 bone, but in this situation, that is not meaningful. Uh, D2 uh, gives us rather high number. So next time, I use the experiment D3 bone. And as you measure ISQ value, buccal lingually, would there be difference? Whatever direction, there is no difference. And here, mesial and distal side. Defect is really large, but here it's very um, attached. So what it would be difference? There was no difference. Hence, whatever the, you know, infect has a defect in, uh, if you have like peri-implantitis, which direction the implant is, you have to measure. But uh, with this one, you cannot know the direction. But generally, proximal uh, seems to be a bit high. But now if there's such a hole, proximal uh, seems to show a bit low, but the difference is not that significant. And again, here it's the uh, you know opposite direction. Now implant ten millimeters. We place that, and here about four millimeters. Uh, there is uh, no engagement, so there is kind of hole. Yeah, here. Uh, so we did sinus graft, and here there is a bone. But with the graft in the beginning, you know there is no engagement in the bone. So uh, grafting. It becomes mature and becomes solid, and there's also integration. Then there should be a change. But here, from 5970, there is a big difference. So after sinus grafting, how the graft matures and how onto your integrate progress, you can sort of feel it. So this type of these defect or sinus grafts also tell mentor is very helpful. And this one I felt a bit much later. Um, I you know, while talking to other uh, doctors. Now here, you placed implant, and then you sort of removed uh, the bone, so there it's uh, empty here. So if there's hole like this, then there should be difference ISQ value, but here there was no difference. So clinically, when do you encounter this situation? When you do sinus graft, sometimes this happens. Crestal, it's D2, rather strong, and after grafting here, it's very solid D1 bone, but in the middle, it's very uh, weak. So the uh, sh number should be different, but as it is strong, you know, top and bottom, then ISQ number is actually uh, high. So there is D4 in the middle, but in the top and bottom, it's solid. I would uh, wait for loading. So you have to uh, explain in chart. In the middle, it's weak because ISQ value or primer stability, um, with that alone, I made mistake of, you know, doing loading uh, very quickly. So you have to write ISQ value here is no meaningful. And uh, uh, that's how you uh, remember and uh, take the right action. So let's look at similar case. A few years ago, seven to eight years ago, there was a big region, so extraction. But after nine years, I came back. So, you know, there was a split in the opposing teeth and it was okay for nine years. But here, surprisingly, there's a lot of bone. So I thought it was a merge like this, but there is a lot of bone filled, but there is a radio lucent area, meaning bone quality might be bad. So we took a CT uh, and it looks it here, there was a hole of seven, millimeter but here it's black in the middle there's in other words nothing so what to uh, place as an implant after a lot of consideration uh, 
I like this type of uh, implant to reduce technical uh, failure. So with 5 times 8.5, there is a you know, hole here, so there's no primary st stability. So there is a, a possibility of uh, doing bone level um, implant. So I use 510, which I don't usually use. So it would be placed like this. And here it's uh, solid and about two millimeters at the bottom, it's solid. And the final energy torque will be about 35 Newtons. And with the ice cube uh, measurement, buccolingually it was 83, mesial distal is 79. So if you look at these numbers, it looks as if it's, it's good. But in the middle, when you drill, uh, it just goes in without resistance. So here at the edge and on the cortical side, it's only holding in these places. So ISQ value you think is uh, high, so you want to do loading. Or insertion torque seems to be good, so I want to do loading. That should be not the case because the insertion torque here, it's final insertion torque, as I said. And final insertion torque, uh, when it comes to loading, is not meaningful. If you just uh, take action based on these, uh, trusting these two, it become risky. So you have to write there's only a uh, bottom one millimeter fix in the middle, it's weak. So let, after reading this, looking at these numbers, it looks good. But here it's melting, then you stop uh, uh, doing. So for this, I would wait at least four to five months before loading. And what is important, re after restoration, the cortical here melts, then here it cannot take the uh, uh, load. So after final restoration, after one month, you check the ISQ value again. And I do believe that is very important. And the limitation of the Ocetel mentor is that here there are different types of implant. And these three all have different uh, length. And this one and this one, same length, but different diameters. So extreme case, this one and this one. This one, it's wide and long. This one, it's thin and short. And these two, what is the difference? The total surface area is different. This means that the stairs bearing uh, ability is different. And generally, when you place these two types of implant, if the bone conditions are the same, then ISQ value will be the same also. So just in case, when you use short implant and say ISQ value is 80, so I loaded, that is not good. Why? Because for this one, it's about how solidly it's uh, holding. Not a, it's different uh, when it comes to stress bearing uh, ability. So there's a lot of people using short narrow implant and them saying ISQ value is and such. So I did the loading, uh, but I do not believe that approach is a good one. ISQ value, of course, is meaningful, but more strict application of the value is necessary. So for this case, I would suggest that strict application by SQ value would be better. It, since it's fast, uh, there's a lot of talk that I feel a is not reliable. What they say is the torque test is much more accurate. But as I said, torque test in the healed ridge, when you place implant there, torque test has a meaning. But in GBR, it's just holding a small amount. Torque test is not meaningful. And reverse torque test, yes, that is very meaningful. So applying that, some people do. But the issue with reverse torque test is you uh, bear load, you know, reversely. If also integration is not fully done, then if it goes out, you put that again, there is a headache right there. So it's uh, reverse torque test is invasive, in other words. So I know about this, but the clinical setting to apply this as is, there are cases that it's not uh, uh, accurate and there is also invasiveness. So I think this is kind of study just for, you know, um, uh, uh, criticism to uh, issue criticism and some say ISQ value and also integration is not the same. What they are saying is this one, the BIC is uh, different by ISQ value is same or BIC is same or ISQ value is different. Then they show biological evidence that could be. But in clinical setting, how would you apply this one? Now you place implant like this and you the GBR, the membrane and uh, tour and you know grafting uh, integration seems to not have 
been done very well. So do you have to bear,、uh, give load here or not? According to their argument, you have to take the、uh, implant arm and look at the BRC, but that's not possible. Of course, as a study, this might be meaningful, but in clinical setting, how to apply this? There is no guideline. So to apply in the clinical setting, Uh, it will be also mental. Of course, it has its own limitation, but in clinical setting, that is the only way. So generally, if you look at this case, after placing implant, you want the patient recover mastication as much、uh, as early as possible. But you know, create provisional denture here. Some、um, I did, but for this. If you create provisional denture, if you do realigning very well and selectively realign material, you change, but still implant、uh, fails. And if you're unlucky, if you do only alignment, then it co- implant go- can go up to sinus. So、um, here, not creating、uh, provisional, but doing the fixed ones as soon as possible is what I want to do. But there's not much of a remaining bone, so we place on both sides. On the top,、uh, upper part, we did a、st- in staged approach、uh, because there was a membrane tear, so I didn't like it. So I did only graft here. So we put in graft, got a membrane, and did grafting based on my、uh, experience. So there is a well different radio opacity. Meaning, although there was a bit of tear, it didn't、uh, expand. It healed well. But on the opposite side, after a month,、uh, we went in there. So here,、uh, we、uh, thought about placing the implant simultaneously. And as I said, this is 2011 case, and this was the last one where I placed this type of two implants at the same time. Because now I do a staged approach always after placing implant. Uh, I want to them the patient to do、uh, mastication as soon as possible. So we did graft and implant at the same time and create provision after f- about five months. And here, after grafting, after six months, we placed implant. So this after six months, the quality is really good. And after one month, uh, we uh, you know、uh, gave loading. So、uh, we will use a provisional first. And here. If you see this side, there was a problem.、Uh, so let's uh, look uh, deep into this. Now, after placing implant, after 4.5 months, I did second surgery. So ISQ values came out like this. You know, 25 it was high, and 27 it could not be measured. And it's not. It might be because it was very low, but if you、uh, measure on the second、uh, surgery day, because soft tissue is there, the、uh, measurement cannot be done. So probably it was done. Measurement was done on the second surgery day. So after second surgery, after placing implant, five point five months later. So in this situation, when would you load? I think you also after six to seven months, you would、uh, you know、uh, go for restoration. So here, after 5.5 months, 73, 73. So two are a bit low. So, but we did three and splitting. So we,、uh, we I thought、uh, it, they can、uh, withstand, and we create a provisional. So just in case,、um, one month later,、um, we、uh, measure、uh, ISQ value again. It goes up. So condition is not、uh, good, but it's bearing、uh, rather nicely. And after three months.、Uh, Patient came in. I thought it would be very high, so two were eighty, very high. But the last one was sixty-eight. So ISQ、uh, value、uh, goes down. It's failing and ailing implant. If you let it be and just go for the restoration with early day loading, there could be late failure. So this is provisional I made, and the resin implant. This was the occlusion, so it, it could not bear. If you let it be, then it will result in failure. So what I did is the occlusion resection, and I told patient don't use the left side, but it will be better to use the opposite side. And there is a possibility of failure. I also shared the information with the patient, and after one month again, it recovered. So it's it's of the failing ailing implant with the overload. It was ailing. 
So after、uh, eliminating the cost, it's going to also successful ocean integration. So after、uh, implementation, how long did we use the provisionals?、Uh, wait. Uh, we did at five months. I think we he, the patient is for five months. Provisional using for long time patients、um, is okay because in eating and doing daily life there's no problem. So provisional after one month, changing with the final ones I don't think is、uh, very good. So after ten months, we place the final restoration, and this was the ailing one, right? And when there is occlusion、uh, load, the load being on the metal and resin, there is a difference. So would it、uh, bear this? I think it's worth checking. So in this case, after、uh, one month usage, we measure it again. It didn't、uh, fall off. So actually, one year after implant placement, it should be more than eighty. But still, it's rather on the low side. But it's holding on. This means definite restoration. It can、uh, bear that. So checking and then doing final cementation is what we do. So bone helium becomes、uh, happens slow. Then if you do that type of stage approach,、uh, you become more confident about your、uh, treatment approach and reduce、uh, failures. So another upper case, when he,、uh, the patient came in, we extracted these teeth, and there was nothing here. So thought about placing implant, and there is a bit of cross bite, and that I thought was not、uh, really an issue. But what I really focused on is on the opposite side. There is a、uh, Instability in the occlusion, so I thought creating provision to have a more stable occlusion, and then、uh, go to final. So after four months of extraction, and you know after extraction, I usually wait for four months. So sinus,、um, I want,、uh, wanted to measure the distance and took the CT, and this is the extraction、um, area, and the residual recent. So black. This means there is the bone quality that is poor. So if you、uh, identify this, you have to tell、uh, the patient that there is a possibility of the graft. But graft means more cost and more time of treatment. So you have to tell that patient too that it's going might、uh, take longer time and、uh, more money. And then you go in. So you open the flat.、Uh, nothing. You know, not even healed. Extern socket is not. Ex- Healed yet? But here there is a bone defect, and on the panorama、uh, photo, we didn't think there would be bone defect, but there was a bone defect. And placing implant、uh, six millimeter, I don't really use it anymore. Rutuni, I uh, use on the molar f-、uh, five millimeter, and this one five mi- millimeter and six millimeter. There's a bit looseness, and you know implant is a bit tilted, and there is like this.、Uh, Blurred or white area. What is this? It's there is a empty、um, area. So six millimeter is not much primary stability. So it would could move because it's not、uh, in place. So with the cover screw,、uh, you know, if you、uh, push that too、uh, tight, then it would、uh, go out、uh, again. So we tried to fix it in place and could not leave it、uh, whole. So we put in graft, but did not uh, uh, pack. You know, I, with the pincer, I closely、uh, put it in. So you know, it tilted because there was a, such a no primary stability. In other words, there is zero primary stability. So it's really loose. In other words, so you would have to wait a long time for this、uh, case. So we did second surgery after six months and the. Me- Value numbers was like this. So, the mentor sometimes gives you two values, and if it's fifty-five, it's still very loose. So you let it be, and then after two months, you know it's still very low. But we took impressions again because after eight months, if you don't do anything to patient. You know, you placed implant for eight months.、Uh, doctor does not do anything. Then you know, patient be- can become suspicious. So took impression and said, come after、uh, two weeks. And here it's sixties. And if you you know put force with you, even with your hand, it could、um, go. It it could just uh, uh, you can easily take out. So let's、uh, wait again. Is what I、uh, told the patient. But we I put something.、Um, 
uh, in here anyways. Uh, so patient uh, was okay. Uh, for, I put in something for primary st stability, and these were the numbers as the months uh, went by. So yeah, I found that um, action needs to be taken. So we put in provisional, but with that, there, the load cannot be uh, borne. So with the provisional, there's occlusion with 83, but 69, there's no under there's under uh, occlusion uh, with that we created a uh, provisional and after a, another month it went up again this means with the provisional it bears some load but it's not failing and it can uh, withstand a bit more so here the occlusion i a bit uh, put it uh, made it um uh, higher as uh, you know about to touch each other not in full contact and then waiting it again again after placing um implant it's been one year and one month but still i have not gone to final restoration still using provisional so for patients there's not much of inconvenience because there is no problem in eating in daily lives except whenever the patient comes in i have to tell him again we have to wait longer but for the patient you know there's no problem in daily life so he accepts it but what i'm saying is if this was a single case and if a single tooth case and this was the situation um, I mean, some people say just placing implant, uh, it just takes its stay, uh, place. Sometimes it happens, but the situation bad and, you know, it takes a lot of time. Then for single case, provisional, you cannot go even after one year. With the single implant, in other words, uh, there's a higher risk for uh, failure. So what I want to say is if it's a single case, then staged approach is the best option. And if you have to do splint, then two uh, placing at the same time might be okay too. So for single case like this one, we extracted tooth and after five months before placing implant, uh, this photo was taken. So there's a radiolucency and 61 year old male. And after five months, still, I thought we could place something here so place uh, 6 by 8.5 but it was loose so well, what i did was xenograft and we put in lyo implant and we just did site development and after five months we did another site development and we did with a bit long and then uh, did final restoration so for this patient uh, implant, uh, you know, after grafting, uh, it took 11 months, but uh, came a bit later because he couldn't come to the clinic. So we waited quite long time. So in the first, this was buckle and mesial numbers. After two months, this were the numbers, uh, 76 and 80. So I think it was medium SQ value. So resin temporary, we put that in. And with that, you can eat, so no problem in daily life. And after, again, uh, so resin temporary is again uh, for three months, and the PFM, final restoration, delivered. And the numbers were quite high. So from here, it went to 80, very high. But in such case, you have to check again. Another month ben went, and it went down. So this uh, final restoration, they could not hold or bear so if you let it be then there could be late failure so what i did was uh, reduced occlusal taper and uh, flattened the spot inclination and what is more important is that uh, occlusion might be a bit high so we reduced that also so again after one month you have to check you know does it bear so it come out up again the number so it's bearing so if the bone quality is bad single a stage approach would be better and one thing i want to say is that if the patient comes in with looking like that there's a possibility of the graft and that there could be it can take a lot of time it's uh, very good to communicate to the uh, patient uh, to set uh, the patient expectations also well can i ask you a question in the middle of your lecture Yes. Looking at your cases, uh, you seem to use Ostel Mentor in most of cases. And I also like uh, Ostel Mentor. So before we proceed with the lecture, Dr. Sun, the, you seem to prefer Ostel Mentor 
So could you explain uh, a bit more about this before we proceed? So why do you take austere mentor? I mean, I do not believe, um, you know, criticizing other products without using them uh, is not a good way. So I used a few months, uh, these two products, period test and Ocell Mentor, and I opted after usage Ocell Mentor because I thought it was better. And then there is a Korean-made uh, product now, so I used that product too, but it seems to be similar to period test. So I think the right direction is Ocell Mentor, so I keep using that. So. Clinically, there's a difference between the two products. Osteo uh, Mentor, you have to uh, connect smart pack and measure by, you know, connecting it. But for period test, you know, like this healing abutment or you just hit the abutment. So when you first use it, uh, it primary stability is weak. And if it hits, I didn't find it very comfortable. So would that re re to also integration failure? Probably not. So I do not believe that is a big concern. And this Korea made a product. I went to the company and heard that connecting smart pack and you know loosened it, and the implant also became loose. So somebody said that's why I prefer the other uh, product. But I think that is really not possible because think about it. You place an implant and after a few months you do second surgery, but loosening cover screw, screw implant also came out. Then surgery was wrong. You know, cover screw in the beginning, even if you, you know, uh, connect very loosely, uh, after a few months, uh, it's, you sometimes have to put some force to take it out. But, you know, with, uh, you know, when you want to uh, remove osteo uh, mentor, but the implant came out uh, same, that means something was wrong with the surgery. Now, osteo mentor uh, strength is you put it in there like close, so it's really convenient. But there is a range of, uh, you can do measurement. And if you go out of the range, the value can change. So when you measure, uh, you have to look very careful. Otherwise, the angle might be not correct. And that is, you cannot really ask the assistant to do it because what if, you know, the assistant does the wrong, then there might be not consistency of the data. So you cannot trust other people uh, doing it. And when you put in the uh, healing abutment, uh, the length changes the value. So you have to remember which healing abutment you used. And with that, you did restoration. Again, the height difference here also result in another difference. So these combinations, you have to remember. So the healing abutment, which one you use, you have to remember. And the biggest uh, thing is that you're not uh, trusting, not being able to other people. But still, I went for Austell Mentor because because all uh, reports is based on Ostel Mentor, 90% uh, previous uh, test uh, they don't really use uh, in studies. So it's uh, better to use, there is a lot of ev uh, literature evidence. And this one, you know, uh, even if you have a different angle, not much of a, a value difference. So if you are within the range, the angle doesn't really change the number. and the, patient do not want to wait, right? So first, I let the patient sit and uh, let, it, let it measure with also mentor. And, you know, patient finds, oh, they are doing something on me. And I, so that I can accumulate the data. And with that, you know, for this patient, I did surgery like this. And also mentor is, you know, moving the direction. So I can sort of have a picture in my mind. And few years, there is a periimplantitis and you take it out and do measurement, if it's smart back, it will be the same as in the beginning. So it's a really strength. But, you know, if there is something about weakness here, that you always have to put in the smart pack. And as I said before, the soft tissue here, uh, you know, uh, if it's a bit different, then in the second uh, day of surgery, uh, there's soft tissue, then you cannot do the measurement. The uh, soft, uh, So second surgery day, because soft tissue measurement might be uh, correct. So you have should not do on that day. Now, 
I always let my assistant do the measurement, and the issue with that is that when the assistant does the measurement, you know, this should not happen in clinical setting. I got it from somebody else, so it's okay. Uh, you know, so you have to be careful. So you are not doing the measurement, so you have to be more cautious. So we always tie like this for implant, but smart pack doesn't have a hole to tie. So you have to be uh, careful with other things, other approach. So you know, supine position. Uh, you have the mouth uh, breath. Um, then uh, you know it can be really risky because it can go in. So I don't do the spine position for implant. I do upright position, and when uh, I let the assistant do it, I do it more up in upright position. And I will check that the patient breathes with through his nose. And using gauze here, then uh, you don't see it. He's uh, breathing uh, the uh, mouth or nose, and it could lead to uh, bigger challenges. So you have to uh, check the uh, position that it's uh, better upright. And because as it does the measurement, but still you can accumulate a lot of data. And I think uh, you know uh, it's that's the benefit that whoever does measurement there is consistent data so always uh, yes uh, the uh, period test uh, sometimes doesn't give you the same uh, measurement throughout the uh, whole uh, uh, thing so I also like using uh, the Ostel mentor it's much better for consistency because it's the same number wherever you do the measurement yes thank you so please continue now the crown to implant ratio CI uh, ratio uh, sometimes you really have to think about it uh, compared to the past we use short implant uh, now more often so in the past uh, short implant definition was less than 10 millimeters but now it seems it's become lower and lower, so less than 8 meter, meters, and some people even use even a shorter implant. Now, for me, 8 millimeter uh, implant, I am okay with it. But if you look here, the CR ratio is now reversed. So in case of splint, uh, even there's a reverse, not much of a problem. And the uh, case of CR, rather the CR ratio, I think long crown, crown itself is an issue. Even if it's a long crown like this, if it's a splint, then generally, I think a lot of people, biological or technical complication, so they would not worry much about that. But the single implant can always be an issue. Now for single case, if it's long single crown, then it becomes very burdensome. Place to place on the tissue level implant. So here, the prosthesis itself becomes shorter. So it uh, would be a bit safer from technical failure. But the issue is that uh, submerged, so you cannot do tissue level implant. So you did a bone level implant placement, then it sort of becomes reversed like this. So this was reported in 2018 consensus conference. So they say 2.2 is okay. I think this one is about two. So even uh, 2.2 uh, 2 biological and technical complication, uh, they will be okay. But do you think this would be okay? I do not uh, really think so. Uh, for this type of case, uh, for a long term, it could have a lot of problems. So inevitably, you place implant and, and have to do restoration. Then what would I think about? First, I would think about biological completion. You have to prevent uh, failure resulting from loading. So I would have more strict application of the ISQ value. So really, when it's stable, uh, you know, more than 85 or so, then restoration, you know, because, you know, the force might be twice if there's a, a lot of load there. And then uh, measuring ISQ value is really important, as I said. You know, 80, sometimes they go lower afterwards. And uh, this is, you know, very unusual case in the clinical setting. So you have to be uh, really look out for the ISQ values. And for technical complication, uh, there might be a lot of uh, fractures. So causal inclination and occlusal uh, plane uh, size should also be taken into consideration. 
situation and they should not uh, bite something uh, solid. So bone has submerged and, you know, inevitable we go like this. So don't chew that it's solid. So cooperation between patient and doctor is key. And in other words, patient compliance, compliance is important. And also mentor also makes your treatment uh, more confident. So diameter six uh, implant, I don't do it uh, routinely, but uh, for uh, restoration. So we uh, put it this type of emplacement and after uh, one month of second surgery, there was no osteointegration and we place uh, uh, there for, for switch implant from 585 to 685. So patient was already a bit, you know, uh, uncomfortable changing implant but after one year uh, rest, you know it's uh, loose they, he said so then you become concerned is it because screw loosening or was it because of failure of OCO integration so I cannot sleep uh, from the day the patient called because you're concerned what happened but here you unscrew and you know measure ISQ value it's 93 then there's no reason to worry No reason to worry. You can say with the uh, uh, confidence uh, to the patient, you know, it just become loose. So you just uh, retighten it. That's it. Then you think about why did the screw uh, get loose? You know, there was no uh, single implant that became loose before this. So I looked into that. So if you look at the contralateral side, implant crown, uh, you don't make it bigger than your natural teeth, but this is bigger. The natural teeth. Why did it so? Because uh, I had a phase where I was a bit arrogant. I'm good doctor, so it would not become loose. So I had that arrogant phase, and I did this work when I was arrogant. So uh, number seven was the opposing teeth. So I would like uh, come contact with that one. So, but now I am modest. So I uh, reduced the side. So we cut the distal side. And buccolingual, I also make it smaller. How? Like this. So here, the occlusion table has become um, smaller. And cuspid inclination, I also made it a bit uh, flat. So no problem, even after nine years. So then, uh, really no problem. You might, you know, ask me again. But if you follow up this type of patient, then you would know for certain. So in 2011, uh, implant restoration, and after 10 years, still uh, coming to the clinic. And after one year, I said, could, could you, uh, a plane was changed, so it became smaller. And if you look at this patient, the perio is really bad. Here is also bad. So with the bridge here, uh, some uh, at some other clinic, they did bridge here, but it's uh, painful. So came to me. So after extraction, could not use it. And again, for one year uh, until implant, uh, did not use. So mostly, uh, chewed on the right side and then it became um, painful here again a period was not good so again chew not here so extraction and then placing implant it took also a uh, longer uh, time about one year uh, time so this meant for 10 years he was using on the right side uh, mostly so why did it lose uh, come loose at the same uh, first time because uh, it was uh, chewed on this side uh, uh, very high and after, so I, um, you know, cut it a bit. And after ten, nine years, it was okay. So if the okurujo, although this um, big, then um, there is a close relation between screw using abutment fracture, technical failure. So if you think there's going, it needs to bear a lot of low, then the occlusion uh, plane is something you need to take into consideration. Another case in 2007, we did this type of restoration. So this was a very gentleman. So I tried to do my best work, but after restoration, four years later, the implant is uh, getting loose. So he was a bit elderly. So I was concerned if the there was a load failure so I screwed that it broke at the bottom this general abutment and this is what I took out and the rest here stayed inside so a lot of uh, companies sell rescue kits and I was also uh, in some of the development of those kits so as you know 
uh, sometimes uh, rescue works, but sometimes it doesn't. And, you know, to take it out, you need visibility. So you have to open the flap. And we just took it out and took time to take it out. And the issue after that is that I took it out, but if it's loosening, it became loose and there's no also integration, then you have to take implant also out. I mean, then if vent is an issue, then it becomes a headache. You, you know, you not, might not have taken it out. It still would have been okay. But anyway, SQ value is 88. Hence, it was only simple technical failure. There was no problem with the implant. So you become, um, you know, uh, relieved again. So when you do treatment, dentist is very uh, stressed because you have to think about these cases. So you could shorten your lifespan. But SQ value is high then you can, you know, do, redo it, no problem. So what was the issue? Uh, I created a crown very big. So there's a lot of facets. So because of that, uh, it became loose. So as I said before, so we did restoration again. And after 10 years, until now, uh, you know, he's coming back again with other treatment, but no problem here. So it shows that also, tell mentor not only the restoration uh, steps but when this happens so as a it's really good for mental health of the dentist and if you think there is going to a, a high occlusion load uh, making the restoration occlusion plane uh, smaller then it helps the reducing technical complication in long term so here it looks a bit smaller right so after placing um, restorations, sometime doing restoration, they say I cannot chew very well because they were uh, chewing on one side and the mandible position uh, changing. Uh, then you know the uh, the position becomes different, uh, or something like there's not much healing and was not chewing on this side and is not familiar on chewing on this side, and uh, look at the. Uh, uh, mirror and it's small, so that's why uh, it's not chewing. And uh, you know, patient thinks in that way, then it becomes a headache for the doctor because uh, you have to persuade the patient. So you have to, uh, you know, in reducing a crucial uh, plane uh, table, uh, there is a way. So this one, like this, the you just. Uh, left the contour so closure table size is same but what is the different like this one and that one this one looks smaller but this not so so is the crown small not really it's a uh, green wax up and then you just put it in on the sides nothing to do with the occlusal uh, force so in the reducing occlusal table if you um, remain the contour as is uh, better for uh, patients. So some lab techniques make it this way. This is not uh, right. So let's leave the contour and uh, reduce the occlusal table. It's better for the patient's mental health. Again, would this be really small here? Not really, because there is no buccal contour. So here you see the buccal contour on the teeth. But this one, there is no buccal contour. So you put the buccal contour here, then I believe it would not have looked uh, small. So when you create this type of res do restoration, you know, uh, if you do a good job, uh, if you, if you reduce a color table, patient will not complain. So this was recent uh, patient. Uh, he came for scaling, but I was really supplied this one year ago and this restoration three months ago. And if you see, it's a really long crown and the bone level in in implant but long crown occlusal table it's really big so i you know i think it would break within you know one year or so so what i told uh, the patient is that because of the situation uh, be careful in chewing solid uh, things this is and with only that this patient uh, you know, would think the uh, past doctor did something wrong. So I say the doctor did not wrong, but bonus of merge because it was not well maintained. So that's why it become bigger. But in such case, if the occlusal table is really big, 
then it really breaks. So and if this one breaks, it's really uh, inside, so it's not really visible. So it's really going to be challenging. If I had done this case, then if uh, he wanted single here, I would not have done it. I would persuade the patient and we use two as a splint. And here I would uh, maybe put a small uh, implant uh, for uh, just uh, for later uh, usage uh, would be better for long term. That's how I would have uh, persuaded patient instead of um, trying to do a single. This is the last case. Now uh, it's a patient who went to the my clinic for a long time and uh, said. Uh, tooth uh, came out naturally and brought the tooth. That means bone uh, is really uh, weak. But uh, I was really busy. But anyway, I took the CT and, you know, there's only a few, a very small bone left. So here there's a submerged. Uh, so uh, lateral approach will be uh, bad. So I placed crystally the implant place. But it's after that I found out there is uh, this uh, long too long crown. So single number seven, it was long crown. So it will break. So what do I need consider this? You know, biology aspect, prosthetic aspect, and patient cooperation. This is what you need to consider in terms of biology aspect. The restoration after SQ value is high, and after final restoration, one or two months later, uh, you check continuously. And in terms of prosthetics, as I said, uh, this one plus, you know, you have to make it light bite. If the occlusion uh, is too tight and too long, it will break. So light contact is also very important. And also patient cooperation is also very key. So in uh, prosthesis, what I did, it was long crown. And this uh, long crown, if you please, it, you know, you cannot really see. So the path is not good. So if there's a sub tilting, uh, there's a torque. So with this one, uh, times the torque, it will really break. So uh, not many cases like this with customization, but in this case was really challenging. This means you have to design really well, is what I thought. So at the lab, um, they create uh, some things like that. This was before adjustment, and I just uh, inside the mouse. This is the photo, so what have changed? If you look at the actual table, then this one, I reduce to this. I reduce much uh, further than this. So this is after reduction. And at the lab, the technicians, this needs to look really good. So they create like this, a wide occlusal table. But as I said, the contour, you leave it be and cut it in this side. Then you can reduce the occlusal table. And this one, this one, what is different? Number seven, you don't see very much. But here you can see. So what I did was that here I reduced. So no contact during lateral excursion. And with that, uh, you can reduce occlusal uh, load. And again, light contact is the key. And you have to show the patient the x-ray and explain the situation and, you know, let the patient know there is a possibility of uh, a breaking. So, uh, you know, making the patient be more cautious. And with that, I would like to conclude my um, two-part lecture. I hope my uh, presentation has been helpful. Thank you for your attention. Well, thank you for the wonderful Dr. Dr. Song. So uh, through this live Q&A, uh, let's look at what the what are the questions that uh, people posted. Nice day, said Dr. Joe, Dr. Song. Uh, thank you very much. And then, let's see. Yes, there is a question. Now it says, Dr. Song, you 
seems to do a lot of delayed loading, but the opposite is if there's elongation eruption, how do you uh, respond or what uh, do you do? That was there's a question. I also had similar question in the past, so I actually came prepared. So let me show you a case. Now, there seems to be two uh, things. When patient comes in, occlusion plane is a bit off. So in such case, it's a different story. For this case, uh, how do the prosthetics and surgery? So treatment plan, in other words, would be key. In other words, how to place the implant in what depth and how to you know match the top and bottom. So treatment uh, plan is important. So it's a different topic. It's about uh, prosthetics and surgery. So you need to uh, learn more about. But what I'm concerned is after extraction, I wait for a long time and, you know, do restoration. But after uh, extraction, you know, it's been four months. And after placing a plant, I again wait for two months. Means basically after uh, six months uh, is my uh, basic waiting time. Then there could be elongation. So, you know, distorting, uh, you know, crucial plane, the restoration also uh, could be not consistent, So the, and there could be food infection also. So I think start of the implant is splinting of the opposite uh, teeth. So if splinting is what I do a must, and you the patient uh, use it until uh, I put in provisional. So this is what I start to maintain occlusal plane, and there are other benefits. Of course, it there's extra cost involved. But once you do it, then after uh, one year, they come back. Your concern might be, you know, uh, four months after extraction, what if they go to other place for treatment? But if you put that in, it's not that uh, pricey. But if you put that in, they come back. So it's good for maintaining occlusion for, for me. And plus, the patient comes back. So that's also good. So I always do this. And also, in case of natural teeth, in the upper side, it stays. But for lower side, uh, it sometimes uh, can fall off. So you might think what to do if it's uh, restoration involved. So if you then sand blasting is what I do. And uh, I use meta and conditioner and then bonding. Then it takes a bit long. For zirconia, sand blasting, zirconia primer at last. And sand blasting and uh, primer condition, which one uh, lasts longer? Sand blasting, much more than the other one. So lower side, it falls off uh, rather frequently. So I always tell patient beforehand, if it falls off, then you know, uh, I will, you know, not uh, charge the first time, but from second time, uh, I will charge. Then they become really careful. So second falling, I charge the patient. So you say sand blasting is better, right? Then after taking it off, you do polishing, right? Yes, um, that one, uh, I'm not really too concerned about policing because it's a uh, uh, brushing uh, surface with a toothbrush. So plaque would be okay, but rubber point in case of a zirconia, then of the di diamond of breast, I don't use coarse or it's only medium and uh, fine. And it really uh, can uh, be uh, brushed off very easily. So uh, with that, uh, you know, since we don't have much time left, uh, conclude by uh, thanking Dr. Sun for a wonderful presentation and like to ask uh, Dr. Sun for his last comment before we let him go. Well, actually, uh, it's a bit uh, burdensome to give lecture because I'm not really uh, always uh, doing everything very uh, by the book or very diligently, but we treat patients right? It's not something that we do. It's mechanical. It's, you know, biological. Like when we have pet, we lo start to love pet. And when you treat patient, human, you have to do your best. So that is why I really try to be very diligent and very thorough. But what is most important thing is that um, you, there is a phase where you become 
Um, arrogant, as I told you, I also had my arrogant face, but that led to failure. So again, always be humble and always uh, uh, with uh, try to be thorough and diligent. Uh, I think then you could have a lot of good results. So you know, humbleness and be thorough in your uh, treatment. Yes, thank you again for your wonderful uh, two-part lectures. So we talk. I hope it's been helpful uh, to uh, the doctors who listen to your uh, lectures. Thank you again. So prostatics on Friday. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. If there's any questions uh, uh, that we did not answer during this uh, broadcast, we will post our answers on our website next time. We are going to look at paradigm shift to digital dentistry, and we will hear from Dr. Lee Soo Young from Seoul Line Dental Clinic. So, and this will be two weeks later from now. And I hope to see you then again. Again, thank you very much.